Yeah, not, you, you can't turn anywhere without seeing it, sort of somebody being lauded for something at the moment here. Yeah. You have an Oscar yourself. Mm, mm. What what is what's the build up? What, it, it, well, you know what? I think when I, I won an Oscar a long time ago, and it was for a documentary in 1999, 2000, something like that. Um, and I think things have changed. I think it's become a kind of disease here of kind of, you know, this mania about awards and everything building up to the Oscars and so many other award seasons and, I mean, sorry, award ceremonies. Um, and I think people forget that, you know, there's other ways of judging movies and, and that not necessarily the best movies always win these things and, and, not, and certainly not the most interesting um, are not part of the whole discussion. And I think it's kind of sad because it reduces down the number of movies that people really talk about and think about. And, but, but I guess it's indicative also of a culture where you know, movies are maybe less important than they once were or less people are going to see them. So it's part of the marketing hoopla to try and get people to go to see the movies. It's unusual. Is that a bit cynical? No. <laughs> it's unusual to see such a thoughtful film that is not made with a huge budget. How difficult is it to get these things financed these days? Well, I think if you make a movie for the right price, it's not that difficult. You know, I'm lucky enough to be able to be in a position where I had one star and then everybody else's character actors, which is what I wanted. I wanted these to be just great faces, great, great characters. Um, um, but because of the idea, I guess, because it's a, because it's, it's, it's a kind of, you know, a fun idea and, a, and an exciting thriller, you know, um, I didn't get pressured to have, you know, you got to have a love interest here and you got to have, you know, another three stars and you got to, you know, I didn't have that pressure. So that was, that, that was really nice. I got to make the movie I wanted in Britain. Um, you know, it was tough because we didn't have a huge amount of money, but um, it was enough to make, to make the film. I, but I do think it's getting harder and harder all the time. You know, you either now make very low budget movies that are real art movies or you, or, or, or you have to make, you know, big proper Hollywood studio movies. The in-between ground is harder and harder because maybe TV is taking over, you know, that, that, that zone has been taken over by quality TV. It's harder to get people to go to the cinema anyway because they've got big flat screen TVs. But I think, I'm hoping that this movie, although it inhabits that central ground because it's very cinematic, because it is an experiential thing. You're in this submarine, you're out in the, out in the, in the depths of the Black Sea, these action sequences I was talking about, that hopefully it, it um, uh, punches of its way as a cinematic experience. I don't know if you have to do this when you make a movie in England, mm -hmm. but here in the States there's the elevator pitch. <laughs> the elevator pitch, which is what, the, the 20 second pitch between yes. floors one and six. Yes. Okay. What is, what is, what's the elevator pitch for your, for, your, for your movie? Well, this movie, Black Sea, is about a bunch of um, uh, guys who've, who've been thrown on the scrap heap of life, they've lost their jobs, and they come together with this plan to get rich, to find an old Nazi U-boat that they've heard is on the bottom of the Black Sea, filled with gold that Stalin was send, sending to Hitler in 1941. And they go and bribe a Ukrainian admiral to give them this old sub, which they shouldn't really go out in because it's kind of clapped out old thing. And they go under the Black Sea, under the Russian fleet, and they try to get the gold. But of course, they just don't go according to plan. Would you go and see that movie?